Hello, guys and girls. My name is Karen. I am 25. Like any girl, I have my secrets. One of them is that I only have half a face. But this does not prevent me from living a full life. And now, I will tell you how I do it. Two years ago, my best friend Sharon invited me to her birthday party. There, I met Stephen, who later became my boyfriend. We talked the whole evening and really enjoyed the time spent together. We discovered that we had the same cultural package. We watched the same films, read the same books. That evening, I realized that Stephen was my destiny. We started dating and soon decided to get married. One evening, I was returning from a girls' night arranged by Sharon. I was over the moon because next week, me and Stephen were getting married. But when I approached my house, someone called to me from behind. I turned around and somebody splashed some liquid on my face. It was as if a stranger lit my face on fire. I blacked out because of pain and I woke up only at the hospital. I could not see anything. My head and hands were tightly bandaged. The doctor said they doused me with acid and it burned half my face off. At that moment, I was thinking only about Stephen and our wedding. I asked the doctor when they would let me out, but he replied that the burns were so severe and I would spend at least six months at the hospital. His words sounded like a sentence to me. The doctor was right. At the time, I could not even imagine how different my life would be. Endless bandages, excruciating pain, sleepless nights. But the real test came when I first saw myself in the mirror. My face was horribly scarred. There were no more eyebrows or lips, only gross scars. It was terrible. It was Stephen visited me in the hospital only once. Soon after, he called me and said that we need to take a break. It was very painful for me to hear that, for I understood that it was the end of us. But I did not blame him, because I was no longer the Karen that he'd been dating before. I had to cancel the wedding and quit university. I hated my reflection in the mirror, because my new face has stolen both my love and my life from me. One day, Sharon came to visit me. We did not see each other since I had been attacked. Sharon appeared to be very friendly. She pretended not to notice my scars. Moreover, she talked to me as if nothing had happened. We chatted cheerfully about fashion, new films, and books. It was the first evening of my new life, the first evening when I wasn't thinking about my scars and the pain. I was very grateful to Sharon. We began to call each other every day. I often invited her for a visit. She came to me happily every time. Once, I noticed a deep scar on her right hand. Sharon said that she had accidentally dropped a kettle with boiling water as a child. She admitted that she understood what pain I had to endure. After the pep talk, we became very close. Now, she was like a sister to me. Sharon did everything to keep me entertained. She brought fashion magazines and music CDs. And one time, my dear friend came with a makeup bag and did a makeover that hid all my scars. I really liked my new look. I did not even want to wash off my makeup for the night. When I woke up in the morning, I looked in the mirror and felt as if my face hadn't ever been burned. I suddenly wanted to always look like this. I took the concealer, the rouge, and began to experiment. In the evening, I called Sharon and invited her to the movies. My friend was very surprised. I had not gone anywhere for a year. When we met at the cinema, Sharon did not recognize me at first. She was expecting to meet the old Karen, who constantly cried and complained, but saw a beautiful, confident girl with flawless makeup. I gave Sharon a big hug and thanked her for my newborn freedom. Since then, I didn't have to hide anymore. Together with Sharon, we went for walks every day. We ate at cafes, visited museums, and enjoyed various exhibitions. 
my friend was gloriously happy at my success in makeup and once suggested that I should take makeup artist courses. I was thrilled about the idea. So I started studying. The makeup science was not just my new hobby, but also a vital necessity. I had to practice a lot. I did makeup for all my friends and neighbors, and soon I had a lot of loyal clients. But one morning, the police called me and asked me to come to the station at once. In a half an hour, I was already waiting in the station. A detective told me he knew who had attacked me. I immediately got very afraid. For months, I've been trying to erase that terrible evening from my memory. And now I had to meet with the person who ruined my life so easily face to face. So the door opened and Sharon entered the room. At first, I thought that she came to support me. I wanted to hug my friend, but the detective stopped me. Then he said that it was Sharon who had attacked me that night. Of course, I did not believe him. I grabbed her by the shoulders and asked to explain everything. But my friend kept silent. The detective said that stains from sulfuric acid had been found in Sharon's apartment. But the most important evidence was the scar on her right hand. I stood up for my friend and explained that she'd received a burn as a child. But the policeman only shook his head. He looked at Sharon with confusion. And she suddenly begged for forgiveness. My friend said that she had secretly dated Stephen and got pregnant by him, but he left her to marry me. Sharon terminated the pregnancy. She blamed it all on me and could not let me get married to Stephen. Sharon arranged the girls' night for me to throw off suspicion. She left the party in advance and waited for me at my house to fulfill her plan. Since it was dark and everything happened very quickly, I did not even recognize her. Sharon hoped that Stephen would leave me and return to her. Well, she was kind of right. He did break up with me, but he never came back to her. Only then, Sharon realized that Stephen wasn't really interested in her. And even my absence didn't mean anything for him in this regard. Unfortunately, it was already too late. In order to atone for her guilt, Sharon decided to visit me. And then we became friends once again. She cried in the investigator's office and asked me for forgiveness. But I couldn't forget what she'd done to me. Her horrible cruelty shocked me. I was completely crushed. At the moment, it seemed to me that I would never believe in friendship or love. So I didn't really answer Sharon's pleas and left the station. My hobby was the only thing that saved me from depression. Students, businesswomen, old ladies, everyone wanted me to do their makeup. After all, I was able to hide any and all of their flaws. They called me Karen the Sorceress, and I enjoyed making people happy. Day after day, I continued to work my magic and help other women. One evening, I was returning home, and suddenly someone called my name using an awfully familiar voice. It was Stephen. He said that I had changed a lot, complimented my looks, and invited me for dinner. But I smiled and replied that the scars on my heart hadn't really healed at all. So I said goodbye to Stephen and asked him never to come to me again. The thing is that my spirit changed together with my face. Stephen was a handsome, charming man, but also a hopeless coward. Shame I understood that so late. Step by step, my hobby turned into a successful business. After a couple of months, I managed to open my own beauty salon. I found my calling, and I'm proud of it. With the help of makeup, I can transform any Cinderella into a true princess. Now I make people beautiful, and they make me happy. Fate challenged me, and I accepted the challenge. And now my life has turned into a test. Every day gives me only two options. I can either give up or continue to fight. And I always choose the second one. Write in the comments whether you've come across similar situations and how you managed to survive them. I always tell my clients that beauty hides inside each of us. Mirrors are quite deceitful after all.